All right, we are live. Our... Hey, everybody. <laughs> hello, hello. We're back with our monthly uh, pet Q&A with Dr. Rob Silver and Joni Camlet. Um, I am Sky yeah. Chilton, Chief Mushroom Fungi. And we're going to kick it off again and answer some of your pet questions. I'm just going to drop this banner here. So if you have any pet questions at all, um, drop them in the chat. Uh, we'll do our best to get to them. And uh, now I am just going to hand things off to uh, Rob and Joni and uh, let them go. Okay. Well, welcome to our um, monthly Q&A. And uh, this is an opportunity for you to ask us questions and have us challenge us with the answers. Um, and I just wanted to say at the beginning that um, although um, some of your questions may be specifically about medical problems that your own pet has, um, it's really, I'm really unable to answer those because I don't know your pet. So the answers are going to be more generically about the kind of condition that your pet has and what my suggestions are for that condition, not so much giving you medical advice for your pet. So just wanted to give you that little disclaimer. Good Joan, point. Why don't, you tell us what, <laughs> why don't you tell us what's in store for us tonight? Yeah, well, I'm uh, I'm super excited. Uh, as uh, as you know, we launched the uh, the Real Mushrooms Pet Line. Gosh, uh, what has it been? A, a just a little over a month ago, and yeah. uh, it's been going really well. Uh, the uh, getting really really good response on the products, etc. Getting a lot of questions. Uh, about how to administer uh, the, uh, the different, the capsules and the chews, et cetera. Um, and so I love that we come on, you know, once a month uh, so that we can answer these questions live. Um, I'm also super excited because uh, we just found out that we're getting lion's mane. Our, uh, our lion's mane uh, mushroom for pets should be uh, uh, arriving like any any minute on our website, uh, probably, uh, yeah, uh, we, we know we have, we know we have it in the warehouse. And, uh, so this is a really, really exciting mushroom for us. Uh, I don't know if you want to expand upon that a little bit, uh, Dr. Silver. Well, lion's mane, um, is a, a very interesting mushroom. It's also very tasty as far as an edible mushroom. Um, and, and <laughs> and, it has, and it has a variety of, of beneficial effects. But I think that the major effect that most people think about lion's mane for is its ability to help um, kind of organize our thoughts and help us be clearer with our thinking. So uh, these days where there seems to be a lot of mental confusion everywhere because we're, things are so stressful in the world, um, we're finding lion's mane is actually the single most popular mushroom that real mushrooms um, sells. And certainly our dogs and our cats um, do have a number of issues in which their the clarity of their own thinking or their stress or their hyperactivity all could use a little bit of tempering, a little bit of you know management. And so we see lion's mane as being one important tool to to achieve that effect. Lion's mane has some other benefits. It, traditionally, it's been used for digestive issues. Yeah. And certainly our pets are troubled by digestive issues as much as all of us. So we are looking forward for these lion's mane capsules. And um, we already have lion's mane in a product. Um, we launched earlier uh, this or, uh, earlier this month, we launched um, lion's mane paired up with reishi and a tryptophan and theanine in soft chews, which are available. We call that our relax mushroom soft chews. So having the capsules as far as a pure extract is a great addition to, um, to our offerings. Yeah, absolutely. I'm actually, as you're talking, I'm just looking for, uh, I received a, a text from one of my, uh, one of the veterinarians that uh, is using those relaxed pet chews that is just, so excited uh, uh, working with uh, some pets that have like um, anxiety. What does she say? Uh, she calls it cognitive dysfunction anxiety, mm. uh, and that the the um, the their uh, caretakers are reporting that they're noticing some some calming difference. So uh, related to what you were describing, Good. yeah. And, now uh, we now. You Generally, when we're talking about using mushrooms, we don't see an immediate effect, you know, like you might with a drug. Um, really, the best benefits are when it's being given regularly and consistency on, consistently on a day-to-day -day basis. Oftentimes, you may not even, you know, appreciate a change for a couple of weeks. But, um, you know, be persistent, be patient, 
and um, and just keep giving those mushrooms. Yeah, keep giving those mushrooms. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I'm wondering, Sky, do you do we have a do we have any questions yet? I guess while Sky's bringing up the first. Oh, hi, Tina. Um, so let's see, Tina. Uh, Rescued, oh, here we go. I rescued a 10-year-old uh, stray cat with feline AIDS. Uh, he takes Imuquin powder on his food once a day and Vetra Science Immune Health. Uh, uh, Dr. Silver, would he benefit from mushrooms as well? Well, well, he certainly would. Um, Imuquin um, is a yeast-based um, beta-glucan extract. And um, although the beta-glucans from any source do have potency, when you get them from a source like a mushroom, there's a number of other molecules that are also present in addition to those beta-glucans, which um, reinforce that activity. So yes, I would, I would strongly recommend that you try um, some mushrooms for your kitty cat, for that stray cat. And you know, the thing about cats is they are a little bit challenging when it comes to giving them mushrooms. And um, capsules are not always that easy as an option as well. But one nice thing about getting the lion's mane in capsule form, the lion's mane, because it's such a tasty edible mushroom, as a powder, as an extract, as a potent extract, is also quite tasty. So you can open that capsule and you can mix it into the food. And um, it, your cat should accept it quite well. Now, there's certain strategies that we use to get cats to be more accepting of strange things that we put into their food. But yes, I, I would strongly suggest that. And we have several other mushrooms available in capsule form. But I think of the ones that we have available, I think that the one that is most feline friendly at this point in time would be this lion's mane that we have coming, uh, coming in hopefully right away, hopefully quite soon. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what's in the Vetri Science immune, he immune Health other than the, the lysine. And lysine is an amino acid that we use specifically for feline herpes virus, which many cats with AIDS do have that as a problem as well. So perhaps that's why you're using it. Yeah. And, you know, to add to that, I was at, when you were talking about the lion's mane for cats, it's interesting because lion's mane, often people say it has like a crab-like taste uh, or like, uh, hmm. uh, to me, it smells a little fishy. Um, oh, okay. So I don't know if that's part of just my imagination, uh, but uh, it, you're, I definitely agree that it's a very, very mild taste compared to some of the other mushrooms. So I'll be curious to, to hear the feedback with uh, cats for sure. Well, I've been trying to convince my own cat that it's something <laughs> good that she should take, but she says it doesn't look a little, a bit like a bird, you know. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. But in a way, you'd think lion's mane would be a very, a very cat-friendly uh, mushroom just by the name, you know. <laughs> there you go. Because every cat's just a little lion, isn't it? Everyone's just, every cat's just, and mm -hmm. some of them are a big lion. Um, and Tina's asking, uh, would uh, a cat take a whole capsule of lion's mane daily? Well, if we assume that this cat is your average cat weight of about 10-ish pounds, I would say... I would start. I would start giving it half a capsule twice daily, mixed in the food. But as I was mentioning, in order to get a cat um, to accept something, the best way is to start with a teeny little bit at first. So maybe just a teeny sprinkle from that capsule on each meal for a couple of days. If he's accepting it, then you can start to increase it. If he doesn't accept it, and certainly wet food is a much better vehicle for this the powders from the capsules. If he's not accepting it so well, then you might want to try something that we call bribe food, which is, you know, like canned tuna or something that you know he'd kill for and maybe yeah. not notice the lion, the small amount of lion's yeah. mane you're mixing in with the food. Yeah. Great idea. Uh, and thank, thank you for the question, Tina. And I hope your dog knows you're talking about cats uh, on Facebook. <laughs> um, our next question. Hi, David. Um, uh, David Williams is asking, is chaga mushroom beneficial for cancer patients? Well, um, you know, one of the hallmarks of chaga has been its ability to help cancer patients deal with that, that terrible diagnosis. And um, in fact, you know, Alexander Solzhenitsyn, the, uh, the, the, uh, the award-winning Russian author, um, was incarcerated in the Russian gulag and he developed cancer there. And um, chaga is found all along the northern latitudes, including 
through Siberia, and he used chaga tea, and he cured himself of cancer. Wow. That's, that's impressive. Mm-hmm. Um, chaga is such an interesting, it's not even, well, it's, we call it a mushroom, but it's not even a mushroom. Right. It's, this yeah. is very true. Yeah. To be technical about it, the chaga is actually a mycelium that 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 infects the birch tree or birch tree or trees like birch and in and, and um kind of invades it and then the birch tree reacts to it. So it's a combination of both the mycelium and the reaction of the birch tree, which has some very unique molecules, some triterpenoids, I don't want to get too technical here, called a betulinic acid and betulin, which are derived really from the birch tree um, 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 resins. Right. Very interesting. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Dr. Silver. So mm-hmm. let's see, um, more, uh, more questions here. Sky, did you have uh, some questions that were submitted uh, earlier that you can post? Ah, here we go. Yeah. Uh, what would mm-hmm. you recommend for a dog with a very sensitive stomach, Dr. Silver? I would recommend proceeding very cautiously with yeah. anything that you introduce to the dog. And um, there are some herbs and things that we can use and we can look at certain changes in the food to help with the sensitive stomach. Sometimes the dog has a sensitive stomach, but it's being fed the same kind of food every day, which continually, you know, um, 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 affects the stomach and makes it more sensitive. So, you know, uh, mushrooms are wonderful. They're, they're not magic pills. There is no magic pill, you know, so there's, so you may want to look at some other issues as well. Ginger root is very good. I take it myself a lot. I've got a sensitive stomach as well. Um, but to answer your question more directly, um, lion's mane, which we've just mentioned, you know, has historically been very good for gastritis as has chaga. And, you know, there's certain what we call pet pairings of different mushrooms that when used together may even be more effective than when used um, individually. So, and, and sometimes when people say a sensitive stomach, you know, as a vet, I think sensitive stomach, they're talking about the stomach, they're talking about gastritis, but some people, when they talk about sensitive stomach, it might be inflammatory bowel disease or colitis or something along those lines. So again, you know, it's hard for me to give specific advice about your dog, but I want to help educate all of the pet parents out there so we can start looking at mushrooms more effectively. Yeah, no, I think that that's great. And uh, yeah, I love that, uh, that pairing of chaga and lion's mane. Uh, nice. so that's, that's what I'm drinking. That's my oh, tea today. Is, uh, I drink mushroom tea uh, every day, just uh, mushroom powder in, in uh, you know, some hot water. And uh, I like to mix it up and I just happen to have chaga and lion's mane tea today. So well, and actually, that's what I've been drinking as well. But I just keep, I have a little, I have a little jar that I, I empty the pouches into. And so it, it blends up into, uh, into a number of, you of, got a mix. Yeah. of different ones. But one of the things that I, I, I am proud of my, my, um, my experience in is to um, figure out how to make these more palatable for dogs and cats. And, and one of the ideas I've had is lion's mane is a great, tasting mushroom, very bland, very acceptable. You know, that's why it's such a prized edible mushroom. Chaga can be a little edgy, especially with a dog or a cat who's a bit picky about things that go into their mouth. It's got a little bit of edge to it, a little bit of bitterness, but blending the lion's mane with the chaga can be a very successful way to improve the palatability of the chaga so you can get both the benefit of both. Take the edge off with the lion's mane. Yeah, no, I agree. Mm-hmm. That's a great idea. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, thank you. Uh, so we have a question from Maria. Um, uh, are mushrooms beneficial for dogs that are anxious or stressed at times? Well, no, that's a great question. Mm-hmm. Well, um, and um, yes, they are. And in fact, you know, that was what we were referring to as far as the uh, lion's mane, having yeah. some, you know, direct ability to help relax and calm. And another mushroom, uh, my f- personal favorite mushroom, which is reishi, also known as Ganoderma lucidum. Um, reishi also has that same um, ability to calm and, and relax. Now, reishi is pretty bitter. So it's good that lion's mane is not so bitter. We have the two, I, I've already combined the two into a very, into a tasty soft chew. We call that relax. I mentioned it earlier. And, um, and Joni's been getting some testimonials from yep. some vets that have been using it, that some of their patients who are a bit stressed, 
you know, are, um, are finding some support with that. So um, Maria, if you do choose to try um, what I'm suggesting, we'd love to hear back from you to find out, you know, if, uh, if I'm just blowing smoke or if I know if or what I'm telling you is going to work, because it should for most animals yeah. with most levels of stress, but, yeah. you know, Absolutely. individual results can vary. Yeah. And I've shared my, my own little dog, Scruffy, who, I don't know if you could see her. She's, she's, well, she's behind me laying on the, laying on the bed there, but uh, she, uh, she has little dew claws uh, and they, they grow and she, she's good with her nail trims, but she hates when I even touch her dew claws because sometimes they get caught on things and uh, she's just very sensitive. So I, when we first got the relaxed chews, I, I gave her, I actually gave her two chews waited a half an hour and she, she laid on her back like a corpse and just let me, uh, let me trim her nails, which uh, I was very happy about. That's not typically what she would do. So mm. I can't guarantee wow. that it was related to the chews, but um, uh, now just going forward, um, I'm just going to keep, uh, keep giving her the relaxed chews every time I have to approach her dew claws. So uh, yeah, I love this formula. Um, so, uh, Maria, I hope that answers your question. Um, our next question is from Moshi. Moshi. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Um, uh, Moshi has a three-year-old dog that just went through a bone marrow transplant to possibly cure her lymphoma. What would you recommend adding in mushrooms as a good general upkeep for health moving forward? Uh, she's 58 pounds and, uh, uh, again, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Uh, Moshi was thinking of adding the five defenders or turkey tail. Good choices. Um, and we're so glad that you also take turkey tail, chaga, lion's mane, and reishi. I didn't, I haven't heard about them doing bone marrow transplants for lymphoma. That's very, very cutting edge. Um, I hope that it, it works. It, it makes sense because that's where the stem cells live that, you know, that become cancerous that then spread throughout the, the immune system. Um, and um, I would say that, you know, you're definitely on the right track. And I, I don't think that there really is an either or. I think um, all of the suggestions that you've made are, are good suggestions, turkey tail. I think the five defenders has kind of a shotgun effect. So I, so I like that in terms of its, its, its broader spectrum of activity. Um, you know, so maybe, or maybe just share your own, you know, with your, with your um, three-year-old. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause the chaga and the lion's mane also have uh, some uh, anti-cancer potential. Mm -hmm. and it, we shouldn't use that that term. But. Now, I guess I have to ask, you know, is this a human? Is this your child or is this a, a fur baby? Oh, yeah. You know, I'm not sure. But um, yeah. anyway, thank yeah. you for the question, Moshe. Yeah, thank you. And we, we, wish, we wish you all the best. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's a tough one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, no, this is a dog. Um, uh, so... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, okay. so, well, that is very cutting edge. Good for you to yeah. find an oncologist that has those skills. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm curious to hear more about that. Um, yeah, same here. Doing these kinds of, these mm -hmm. kinds of treatments. Um, wonderful. And, and David, um, oh, David, uh, we wish you the best uh, mm -hmm. with, with your cancer treatment uh, as well. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. And, you know, and, and, um, Many doctors aren't aware of the value of mushrooms, and, and for many of them, they also are concerned that adding anything different than the protocols that they've developed and they have good statistics for may throw them off. And so, uh, and so that's where the doctor's coming from, not really out of a place of ignorance, but perhaps out of a place of not wanting to do any harm and not knowing enough. Yeah, 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 no, it's true, and it, it uh, often it comes down to what your comfort level is, whether it's working, uh, supporting yourself uh, with, you know, with cancer or your pet, uh, you know, it, it's uh, sometimes a, a very challenging road to walk down when you're trying to navigate through uh, traditional, you know, like the uh, medicine, uh, uh, you know, integrative medicine and the other types of medicine, uh, the right choices to make. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, good luck. Good luck with that. Um, so our next question, uh, 
Oh, this is a great one. Do our dog's bodies become immune to the health benefits of mushrooms if we use them on a continuous basis? I've been asked this a number of times and asked also about like pulsing, you know, the term pulsing uh, the mushrooms. No, the simple answer to that question. They do not become immune. In fact, the longer you use them, the better they work. Yeah. You know, and, and mushrooms are really meant to be part of your lifestyle. Something that's taken every day on a, on a consistent and regular basis. And um, that's where you get the very, very best benefits. So, no, I would say just, you know, keep at it and, um, and continue to use them on a continuous basis. Okay. What about uh, the other question that I, that I often get is rotating the mushrooms. And I guess that's kind of the same. Like some people ask, should I be doing turkey tail and then switch over to reishi or, you know, something else. And uh, again, again well, it, well jo last night, Joni and I attended a meeting where we had a very, very um, expert um, um, herbalist discuss the use of mushrooms. And that very question was asked about rotating or, or whether we develop tolerance to the immune benefits. And, and his answer was that there's really no need to rotate, and I don't disagree with him. However, I do think that there can be a value, maybe not on like a weekly basis or, you know, five days on, five days off, but perhaps, you know, quarterly, every three months or every four months, maybe change to a similar mushroom or add a second mushroom to what you're doing. Because although all the mushrooms contain a similar a, a similar molecule called a beta-glucan that has very similar properties for all the mushrooms. Each of the mushrooms also have these individual molecules specific to that individual mushroom, you know, um, the kind of uh, substrate it grows on, what its genetics are. And it could be that there's other molecules in there, which may also be supportive of the molecules in the first mushroom you're using. So this is what I do for my own health and I've had my own health challenges and it seems to work okay for me. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree with you more, Dr. Silver. I think that's great. Like with my, again, with my little dog, Scruffy, who, you know, knock on wood, she doesn't have any health issues except for the fact that she has dew claws that I have to cut. But um, I rotate, like I, you know, I, I, uh, I rotate her food and I also rotate her supplements. Um, because I, I just think, you know, she can benefit from, uh, from all of them. And so, you know, I, if I run out of a bottle of, uh, of one and I have another one, I start that. And, you know, if she, uh, if, if the health issue comes up, I will, I'll, I'll use, you know, the mushrooms that will focus in that area. But in the meantime, I love the variety. And it's one of the reasons I also love the five defenders because it's such a, our five defenders, uh, mm -hmm. pet, product that has a combination of five different mushrooms. Yes, a lot of so synergy. Kind of covers all the bases. Um, yes. I love that. Yeah. Um, we have a question. Oh, this is such a great question from, from Derek. Uh, Derek wants to know about the difference uh, fruiting body compared to the mycelium. Our favorite question. <laughs> <laughs> well, there have been studies that have been, and, and we need to define what we mean by mycelium. Yes. And, and often, and, and many times the substrate that the mycelium grows on is responsible for creating the potency of the mycelium. And mycelium grown in a liquid culture where you can separate the, 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 the biomass of the mycelium from the liquid and then do an extraction of it or somehow process it so the, the goodies that are in it are more bioavailable is, a very, is very potent. And we have actually some mushroom extracts that are derived that way from shiitake and from turkey tail. Mm -hmm. But um, when you grow the mycelium on something like grain, which is a very common first step in the cultivation of all mushrooms, but usually from growing it on grain, and we call that spawn, we then take the mycelium on the grain, on the spawn, and put it on its appropriate substrate, which for turkey tail, for instance, might be some dead or dying wood, you know, for... Um, um, for um, for the for agaricus, for instance, might be soil, you know, or compost, or psilocybin might be soil or compost. Um, but when you grow it entirely on the grain, and then you can't separate it from the grain, and so when you dry it, you get fifty percent 
grain carbohydrates. And many people with dogs avoid grains. They buy mm -hmm. grain-free food. And then when we did, there were, there were some studies that were done, um, published studies that compared the beta-glucan content, which is the, the main um, um, the main active ingredient in all mushrooms, the beta-glucan content in the fruiting body to the mycelium grown on grain, it's, you know, there's a difference of three to four to five times greater potency in the fruiting body than in that mycelium grown on grain. So my recommendation is, although there, there may be some benefits that the mycelium has within the grain, um, for the maximal benefits based on the presence of this most active ingredient, the beta-glucans, for me, I strongly suggest looking to the fruiting body versus the mycelium. I, and I couldn't agree more. And that's, I think that's one of the reasons both of us work for real mushrooms because we, you know, we, well, we yeah, work with that, mushrooms. Well, that's, <laughs> why, that's why it's called real mushrooms. Yeah, yeah. They really are. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I was wondering if we could back up a little bit. I'm sorry on these questions, but I wanted yeah. to just go back to Moshe with her, yes, um, yes. with her dog, because she asked dog, about yeah. the dosage. And I think, you know, it would be a shame to not, you know, complete Absolutely. this conversation. Yeah. Um, so with a, with a dog that has lymphoma, with a dog that has undergone bone marrow transplantation, you know, there's, it's been under a lot of stress. I would start with a low dosage and one, two, per day for 58 pounds would be considered a relatively low dosage, but I think it's a good place to begin. Take it really slow, carefully and easily because not sure, you know, um, there always are these idiosyncratic unexpected reactions that are always possible. And the more stress and more medical stress, you know, a critter or human is under, the more likely there, there could be to have some sort of adverse reaction. So potentially, theoretically, it should be good. But just take it slow. Yeah. Very, very wise words. Um, and now we're going to move on to Peter, um, mm -hmm. uh, who says, my little boy Ramsey just had surgery to remove a sarcoma tumor. Uh, what mushrooms are best? Well, traditionally, historically, turkey tail has been, you know, the, you know, one of the major mushrooms that have been used for um, cancer. And certainly now that the cancer has been removed, um, and I always feel, and it's a lot harder for something like a mushroom or, or even for chemotherapy to work on a mushroom that, or to work, sorry, work on a tumor that is, you know, that has a large mass. It's like a critical mass. The less actual tumor cells there are in the body, the more likely an alternative therapy or a conventional therapy is going to be successful. So I think turkey tail would be a, good choice, but, you know, so would our five defenders or our reishi. And even our lion's mane that we're discussing being good for, for mental things has some really good studies showing its effectiveness for cancer as well. Okay. So um, depending on whether your little boy Ramsey is is picky about things, you know, you might want to try our, our other chews, which are our immune chews, mm -hmm. which have the five defenders in them. And then I've put in other herbs which have, you know, which have um, potency to enhance the activity of those two mushrooms, a Chinese herb called astragalus, an Ayurvedic herb called ashwagandha, um, some catnip and valerian, and, um, and some passion flower and, um, and lemon balm. And the combination is quite potent, and they're, they're pretty palatable for, for most critters, and hopefully your little boy Ramsey would like that. But, you know, we have the capsules as well. And um, we have a lot of choices available. And I don't think there's any bad choices. I, I agree. And uh, just going to, uh, Peter uh, says that he's a mini schnauzer. So, oh, okay. Little guy around, would that be around 20 to 20 to 30 pounds or? A little dog with a big personality. Yes, definitely. Definitely. Um, so, the dosage on that, um, just to help Peter out, probably. One one capsule. Well, um, we have it labeled one capsule for every twenty to forty okay. pounds of body right. weight. Um, so you know, if it's a small a smaller dog, then you might want to sprinkle half a capsule twice daily 
on the food, um, mm -hmm. but the same dosage applies to the soft chews. And you can break the soft chews in half. You know, you're not going to cause any problems by giving it a higher dose, and you may have more effectiveness in terms of its immune um, activity. Um, yeah. And it's really just more a matter of your budget and how much your your critter is willing to accept you give them on a daily yeah. basis. Exactly. Thank you, Dr. Silver. Um, so, uh, oh, here's a, here's a good one. Um, what mushrooms would help my 14-year-old French bulldog, Frenchie, with arthritis in her rear left leg? Well, and I get this question a lot about arthritis and uh, in dogs, and and I think the reason is because there's 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 no really one single effective treatment for arthritis, and it's it's so it's so heartbreaking to watch them limping around and having trouble getting up onto the couch where they used to get on and and everything else. So um, I really believe that you know if you're addressing arthritis, you, you and hopefully you are already using a number of different approaches to it, including things like joint lubricants, like chondroitin and glucosamine, and possibly some CBD, which could be very helpful for that. But I recommend the mushrooms because they have such a strong anti-inflammatory activity. Activity. And many of the Frenchies that I've seen also have um, some level of um, allergy, uh, food allergy, skin allergies as well. So in this case, I would suggest the use of reishi because reishi has some studies that show its effectiveness as an analgesic to help deal with pain. It has good anti-inflammatory activity, which can help work with whatever the other things you are using for your Frenchie. Um, you know, and it can also help if you do, if it is also suffering from you know, some level of allergies, it has an antihistaminic effect. So that could also be good. Yeah. Agreed. Thank you, Dr. Silver. Um, Maria has a, a good question about mushrooms and uh, elevated liver values. Uh, uh, is there a mushroom you'd suggest for the, to help uh, uh, lower uh, liver values? I think any mushroom would be helpful because of its ability in terms of dealing many, there, there's a number. And of course we need to know, you know, what caused those yeah. elevation liver values. The liver is a, a big organ and can have a lot of, it does a lot of things and can have a lot of problems. Some of the conditions that we see with elevated liver values have to do with kind of an immune mediated condition in the liver. So certainly the use of a mushroom with a strong um, anti-inflammatory effect could be very effective. And and I'm going to, you know, I don't think you can go wrong with any choice. My personal choice for a situation like this would be reishi. I think reishi has a lot of value for liver issues as well as many other problems. Yeah. And the problem with reishi, though, is, I'm sorry, Joni, is that it, it's the taste of it. It's, it's very, very bitter. Oh, now, we kind of we want it to be bitter because the bitterness is, uh, it, it corresponds to the triterpenoids that they contain. And reishi has the highest concentration of triterpenoids of any mushroom. And it's those triterpenoids that have that antihistaminic effect, that anti-inflammatory effect, which all work synergistically with the beta-glucans that we find in, in the reishi. Yeah. Do, yeah. do you have any suggestions? Well, I was wondering about lion's mane for, for liver. Um, Certainly. I, yeah, I think uh, I think a lion's mane is also hepato supportive or, or supportive of liver. So um, I think that would definitely be uh, maybe also be a good one to look at um, and, yes. and, mm -hmm. and taste and tastier. Although you're right. I mean, the, it's that bitterness that uh, mm -hmm. the, the medicine's in the bitterness. Um, right. But uh, yeah, yeah, but it is, it is a, it's an acquired taste. I'm actually enjoying it more. The more I drink the rate, like, you know, you start to, uh, you start to get a taste for bitter, but humans and animals, I mean, animals and us humans, we, we've been kind of, we don't have a lot of bitter in our diets. So it's something that we tend to avoid. Um, I like the reishi in my, in my um, espresso. Yeah. 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 It seems to work there. I haven't gotten there yet, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I'll have mm -hmm. to give it a try. Um, yeah. Here's a, here's a good one. Um, what what uh, how to get a dog to stop licking their paws twenty four seven? Well, that's a difficult question, actually, yeah. because there are so many reasons why a dog could be licking his paws, and um, I've always felt that it had a lot to do 
with um, food allergies. And commonly, if they're, especially these interdigital spaces in their paw, if they're, if they're licking that, sometimes they get moist dermatitis there. And oftentimes food allergies with um, issues with the paws are also accompanied by ear issues and sometimes also anal gland issues. So that, that may, I mean, I think mushrooms certainly can be are good for everything, but that's kind of why I'm working here. But um, generally what I recommend is to, is to do a, some testing of the food to find out if the food itself may be the cause of this. I've had a number of patients that when we've done this test and there's a saliva test, you can buy it online. You don't have to go to see the vet for it, actually. Um, you, can, you can test 24 different ingredients and, and other associated ingredients and look at what you're feeding, look at the list of ingredients and choose something else that doesn't have it in it. I've seen really good benefits for that. So, but but getting to getting to your question with regards to mushrooms for this problem, I'm going to go back to reishi again because of its favorite mushroom. No, it, it, it actually <laughs> is. Where, where's my where's my reishi? You know. Yeah, a, there you go. I love this stuff. It's such a beautiful, such a beautiful mushroom. But um, but I would I would recommend looking at at reishi for that, and and we're looking at putting together um, an allergy formula. That would um, that might be helpful. That would have mushrooms in it, but also a few other um, types of, um, of nutraceuticals that are um, effective and, and helpful for for allergies. Yeah, an allergy formula would be great. And if I could um, maybe put on my canine rehabilitation hat for a minute, and uh, you know, this I I understand you're talking about licking paws, but I just want to talk about dogs that lick in general. Uh, sometimes if a dog is licking, 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 and it's like around a joint area, uh, it could be related to pain uh, in that because, you know, imagine like, let you know, if you have, let's say you've been working on your computer for a long time and your wrist is bothering you, what do you do? You start, you rub your wrist, you know, you're just kind of aware of it and you're rubbing and you're trying to make it feel better, but dogs can't do that. So often you know, they use their mouths uh, for so many different things. And so that licking could be related, could be a sign that your dog mm -hmm. is having uh, pain or inflammation in that area. So just want mm -hmm. to throw that out. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's, as I said, there's many causes for yeah. it. I, I yeah. chose the one that, that I Absolutely. see most commonly. Yeah, pause. Mm -hmm. Allergies, no, you know, definitely most common. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, okay, we're ready for our next question. Uh, uh, <laughs> this is a good, this is a great, uh, great question for Dr. Silver. Yes. Cause I've developed a bit of an expertise around yeah, cannabis as well. Mm -hmm. I think CBD and mushrooms is a really excellent combination. Um, they have a lot of similar properties, but they have slightly different ways that they go about them. Um, I think CBD is a bit more potent as an anti-inflammatory and as a pain reliever, and um, but when you combine the mushrooms with it, you get sort of a, a one-two punch, you know, kind of a double a double whammy to reduce inflammation. And and there have been a couple of accounts of CBD, especially at higher dosages, um, creating um, some digestive issues. So you know, perhaps you know, if if that is your dog that has that, then perhaps choosing something such as lion's mane, as we were discussing earlier, for its benefits to the digestive system, you know, would be an even better combination than, um, you know, one that doesn't have that, those properties. Yeah, that's a, that's a good idea. And I just want to add for the, for the, some of you might be meeting Dr. Silver for the first time through real mushrooms. Uh, what, so what you might not know is that he's also an expert on uh, CBD for animals, uh, cannabis. He, uh, you were like, you were, you're the, probably the, the first veterinarian, you're the go-to veterinarian for everything, everything uh, uh, cannabis uh, CBD related. Uh, you were kind of, you are a trailblazer in that area. Okay. Uh, Dr. Silver just got back from speaking at the Fetch Conference uh, in North Carolina, where mm -hmm. he, uh, he uh, you spoke for what, five, six hours on, uh, five hours. On, yeah. five hours on cannabis. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, 
Yeah, I am. Um, I I I saw the the value of cannabis and CBD, you know, shortly after it became legalized, and so um, I was I, I worked for a veterinary company. We were the first company to introduce CBD um, in uh, to veterinarians in twenty four in two thousand and fourteen. So, yeah. yeah. I yeah, remember but, that. But, you know, uh, CBD is getting to be, you know, kind of old hat now. Mushrooms are the new <laughs> thing. So here I am on the cutting edge of this as well. There you, know? you go. Well, you know, you, you're, you're intuitive and you know where the, you, you know, uh, these good, these good plants, you know, uh, the benefits of these wonderful, amazing plants and what they can do not only for us, but for, you know, for our, our pet, uh, our pet family. So it's fantastic. A lot of people um, kind of, kind of, you know, associate um, cannabis with mushrooms. And I think it's, it's more, I think it starts out because of the, the intoxicating effect of THC mm -hmm. and the potentially intoxicating effect of psilocybin you know, which were, which now is, is also like CBD becoming more legal and more mm -hmm. looked at as a good potential remedy for a variety of conditions that have not responded very well to pharmaceuticals, including um, PTSD. Exactly. So, but, but, yeah. and, but really it goes way beyond that. I mean, there is, there's so much that the two organisms have in common. They each have a, a multitude of molecules in them, which have, which all work together synergistically and which can benefit the individual that's taking them, you know, in many, many ways. They have, yeah. they, they have a wide reach in terms of the conditions they can touch. Yeah. Yeah. No, I totally agree. We're so, uh, it's so wonderful. We have access to these tools, you know, in our veterinary toolbox now. So mainly. Uh, absolutely. Finally. Uh, do we have any more questions? Yes. Uh, oh, this is a good one. Uh, the xylitol mm -hmm. question. So, uh, yeah, should uh, should uh, this person be concerned about naturally occurring xylitol in mushrooms? Well, the, the short answer is no. Um, but let me explain a little bit about yeah. that. Um, xylitol is a it's a an alcohol sugar that is very sweet but doesn't have, um, for humans, much of a glycemic index. And that's why you'll see it in chewing gum and as an artificial sweetener. For dogs, it's different though. And xylitol stimulates, um, you know, the, a huge reaction, you know, within their, their blood regulation system and can be toxic. And it can be very toxic, in fact. Very and so, of course, it's of concern to, to pet parents about that. And one mushroom that we've discussed already, which isn't really a mushroom, it's a fungus, is the chaga mushroom. And the chaga mushroom grows on the birch tree. And as I mentioned earlier, the mycelium grows into the tree and the tree reacts to it. Well, tree sugar, the sugar that we like, if you've ever, because, you know, the Indians used to, the Native Americans used to use the bark of, of some trees to, um, for sweeteners. And, you know, we have um, maple syrup, you know, so, so tree, mm -hmm. the tree sugar is called xylan. And they're very similar, but you have to chemically, you have to take the xylan and put it into your laboratory and you have to chemically convert it to an alcohol in order for it to be xylitol. Xylan itself is not toxic. You know, it's just a, you know, it's just a mild sweetener. So, but we've been very concerned about this and especially since we've launched a product for pets and we've been getting questions about that, we went ahead and we analyzed our chaga for xylitol so that we could put everybody's mind to rest. And I have to tell you, and we can we can show you those those analyses, of, you know, in some kind of you know uh, some kind of a, a format. But um, the xylitol content in our chaga extract is a zero, you know. Yeah. And yeah, and there's also concerns about oxalates, by the way, in chaga, and we've also done testing for that because, if anything, you know, one reason I'm with this company is because of their their excellence and because of their attention to the detail and safety and their integrity in terms of creating a very pure product. And you could be certain, especially if you'll, when you get to, if you, if you have any of these bottles from the pet product, they've all got my picture on them. And actually even better than that, they've got the picture of my dog. Ollie. Ollie. Yeah. yeah. So I, you know, so I, I'm not going to put my picture on a label unless I'm certain that what's inside that bottle is absolutely the best. Yeah, absolutely. And I would say uh, regarding the xylitol, you know, you should, you need to be looking at the other things, not, you know, not mushrooms that you're feeding your pet, including peanut butter, because 
some peanut butters now. Uh, there's uh, yeah. xylitol in peanut butter, and they're changing the name of xylitol. They're calling it birch sugar and other names as well. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's and and actually, birch, it's, it's wrong because it's not birch sugar. Birch sugar is xylan, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. but they, but they just, you know, and so you have, you do need to be careful about yeah, that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because it is toxic. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Great question. Um, do we have any more questions? Uh, the, the cooking with, uh, you, uh, if using fresh mushrooms in diet, should they be cooked or raw? That's a question we get often. Mm -hmm. Well, mushrooms are best eaten if they're eaten cooked. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Some mushrooms, even our little white button mushrooms, have very small amounts of a, of a toxic principle that once they're cooked, it's eliminated. Yeah. Plus, if you're eating the fresh mushrooms for their medicinal value, the, the goodies that each mushroom has are locked inside a very, a very rigid cell wall. And the only way that we can release those good molecules in there is by cooking them you know, by heating them for a certain period of time. All of our mushroom extracts are hot water extracted, which we, we heat them, we put them in a hot water bath at a certain temperature for a certain period of time that breaks down that cell wall and then helps us to extract the good stuff that's inside that mushroom. So they should be cooked. Yeah. They're better tasting that way too. Yeah, I agree. And uh, as a follow-up question, so if somebody did want to like add some cooked mushrooms, uh, maybe mm -hmm. they, they go to the farmer's market and they want to uh, add some mushrooms to their pet's uh, diet. What are some good mushrooms? I'm thinking what shiitake and oyster mushrooms would be good. Or growing them in their basement. That's getting very right. popular. Yeah. Because in fact, I'm, I'm doing that here now, trying to get on that. And I think you said you're growing oyster mushrooms, Joan. I was. Not right now, mm -hmm. but I plan to do mm -hmm. it again. Yeah. So, yeah. so first of all, realize that mushrooms are 90% water. So if you're going to get enough of them to have a good beneficial effect, you know, like, you know, if, if you take a, um, you know, like, let's say a gram of mushrooms is half a teaspoon of powder, then yeah. um, that half a teaspoon, that gram really represents 10 grams of um of fresh mushrooms. Yes. So, but, I mean, I think, you know, the, the, whatever mushroom you choose, whether it's the shiitake or the um, oyster mushroom, um, the lion's mane, yeah. yeah. And I, I, I've I actually was we actually were able to find my taki once at the supermarket. Nice. They're all wonderful, wonderful medicinal yeah. mushrooms, and they're also very prized for their taste. You know, yes. and um, yeah. we eat a lot of mushrooms in this house. That's for yeah. Sure. And I would imagine for animals as well. I mean, I know I uh, I hear this for people whenever you try an, a new mushroom, um, and I know this is. You know, I hear this in the foraging groups, but it also really relates to any mushroom you get at the farmer's market. You should just try a little bit to start out with and make sure that your body is uh, with that cooked mushroom, uh, that that it, it, it likes that. Um, so uh, would you agree with that? Uh, I mean, I guess anytime you added something new to a pet's diet, though, you should do it in a small and a very small amount and, you know, gradual. Well, definitely, because especially, you know, if a pet's eating the same thing day in, day right. out, and give them something unique and new, um, it they may develop um, some sensitivity to that. But I, I have a question for you, Joni, um, because maybe you're more knowledgeable, you know, about um, mushroom about sensitivity. Are people, are, are, are people, you know, allergic to or sensitive to mushrooms? I, I wasn't aware that they were. So, um, Dr. Silver, I, I don't know if it was my computer or yours, but you, you froze on me and I didn't hear what you said. I didn't hear the question. That's fine. You, you know, it, it, it was both ways. You froze as well. No, my question was just regarding, <laughs> yes, my question was just regarding um, whether humans, you know, the human animal has, has a sensitivity to mushrooms. Is that one reason why you're, rec why you were recommending um, trying just a little bit first, you know, is that documented? I haven't read any, um, um, any papers is, that's, that suggest that. Yeah, I think it's, uh, I, you know, I just, 
I became obsessed with mushrooms uh, about two years ago, completely obsessed. I mean, uh, they were mushrooms have taken over my life. I got my mushroom necklace and t-shirt, I got my, my mushroom hat. You know. well, I've got my mushroom hat too. Uh -huh. I work for I work for a mushroom company. Um, you know, I'm just all about the mushrooms. And I also got really interested in mushroom foraging. And so, in fact, I'm going out this weekend because we got a little bit of rain. Uh, mm. There's mushrooms coming up in my neighborhood. So mm. I'm off into the woods uh, in the Berkeley Hills this weekend to look. But often in the foraging groups, they, they talk about of course, never eat anything you find, you know, uh, that you forage for unless you're absolutely sure. And so, you know, especially if you're a beginner, you want to like make sure that somebody who's an expert, you know, sees those mushrooms before you eat it. But they often talk about just any mushrooms in general that you should start off small. And I had, you know, I had that experience with um, eating morel mushrooms for the first time. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, which was very, I was very excited to try morels for the yeah. first time. Um, a highly prized uh, mushroom, which turns out they're now learning how to cultivate. This is a mushroom they were that uh, up until just very recently was only found in the wild and only certain times of the year under certain trees on a certain hill, you know. <laughs> it was very, very um, uh, mushrooms, very difficult mushrooms to find. And so I got a hold of some and yeah um my uh my body did not like them uh yes. so yeah um so yeah it's just but again it just goes back to when we're talking about pets whenever you add something new to the diet you just want to start slow um True. especially if that uh if your dog or cat has been eating you know uh, uh the, the same you know eats the same thing for breakfast and and dinner um when you mix it up the the body will have an adjustment period. And so uh, you don't want to overdo it. Yeah. Was it tasty at least? It was what? really good. And then uh, I just, yeah, um, I guess the, the term gastric distress would uh, would apply well. <laughs> to, mm. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. really bad heartburn. Uh, just, uh, really? yeah. And so I was told maybe I didn't cook them enough. Um, and now I'm debating that there are, there are actually morels have shown up at the farmer's market here because in California right now, um, morels interestingly grow where in burn areas where there's oh. been fires. And so uh, the, the morels are coming up. Unfortunately, we have a lot of, that would make a lot of area for morels to grow in Northern California. And so um, I have a, farmer's market that has a beautiful mushroom area and uh yeah the morales just shot up 50 uh 59 a pound um so i mean i might be able to afford like two <laughs> morales you know i can't maybe a handful better to find them <laughs> yes better to find them so maybe mm -hmm. this weekend but uh good luck but yeah and then i have to debate whether i want to um uh risk risk my body saying no again or oh, just yeah, yeah. anyway <laughs> Maybe it was how you prepared them, or it could have been. I'm I'm not the best. I'm not the best cook. So. Maybe take your chaga and lion's mane tea first. <laughs> there you go. So my mm -hmm. my stomach is nice and uh mm -hmm. nice and ready. My digestion is primed with the yeah. uh, with the good the good digestion mushrooms. That's a, that's a great idea. Um, so do do we have any any more questions or or is that is we're, that the, we're the nearly answer? over? Um, I know. But, if we don't have any more questions, I, I would, and we have a few more minutes, Derek, um, who asked the question about the mycelium, he followed yes. up with a statement and yes. a question regarding regulatory agencies for right. the quality of mushroom products. Mm -hmm. And the answer, Derek, is no, there is no regulation of mushroom products or mushroom labeling. Um, we have, um, Real Mushrooms is just, is now joining a trade group, um, the, a pet, you know, a pet product type trade group that does have, you know, um, quality control and regulatory oversight, and um, we're going to be working with them to um, to get some labeling standards together um, to um, to promote truth in labeling because it's really important. That's all the consumer has to go on is that label, and it's very important that it be yeah. truthful. It's exactly. Do you, um, can you give the name of that uh, that organization, Doctor Silver? It's called the National Animal Supplement Council. Um, yeah. 
nasc.cc would be where their website is and they um they um they do like third party um, inspections of manufacturing facilities to ensure that they're of CGMP standards. They also do random, um, you know, they, they select your company's products at random. They buy them at random from, from the internet or some source like that. And then they analyze them to make sure they meet label claims. Yeah. And if you, if you, if you meet these standards, you then can display their seal on your, on your product um, container, which is which informs the consumer that you know the quality control is in that product. Yeah, and I'll just add, it's a very well respected organization, and uh, they are. They've been around yeah. since two thousand. Yeah. I've been with them um, with another company since two thousand and one. Yes, yes, and uh, yeah, I'm 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 really excited that we are. Uh, it's a good that, we're, that we're moving in that direction for sure. I think yeah. the quality, you know, we we the the quality and safety, purity, you know, consistency of our products is the, of the utmost importance to us. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thank you for, uh, thank you for following up with that. Sure. Um, so to. is that um, should we should we wrap up? Um, yeah, I think we're there getting are no more there. questions uh, coming in. Uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're good. I got to sit back and listen for an hour. Hey. It was awesome. Awesome. Yeah, no, this is so much fun. And uh, yeah, uh, I encourage everybody to go out and try the lion's mane. You're going to love it. I uh, can't wait until it comes in. So and, don't uh, neglect the reishi. <laughs> Rob's favorite. You know, lion's mane is my favorite. Clearly, lion's mane is my favorite mushroom. Rob loves the bitter, bitter reishi. But uh We'll have to, yeah. And we're both very competitive, so we're, we're going to have to see where this goes. <laughs> there you go. I'm going to have to grab my head of lion's mane. Uh, <laughs> to, uh, next next live, I will have. Off. I'll have it ready. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> all righty. Well, uh, we'll see you all next month then. And uh, Sky, thank you for moderating. And uh, thanks everybody. Go go team. <laughs> Bye.